Welcome back to the statics review videos. So we've done the course overview and the objects and the loads and the free body diagrams. Now we want to talk about equilibrium. But really, I have to say, to talk about equilibrium is to talk about the entire course. Because we are talking about this entire equation. Objects, free body diagrams, loads, equilibrium. Everything we do is equilibrium. So we're going to specifically call to mind two dimensions, three dimensions, um, in terms of particles, trusses by the method of joints is just a special case of particles. But then we did rigid bodies, and we did two dimensions here and three dimensions here. Special cases of that would include frictions, trusses by the method of sections, frames and machines. All of that is just a special case of rigid bodies. Internal loads, shear and bending moment diagrams. Again, special case of rigid body equilibrium. Instead of taking the whole thing, we're going to take portions of the thing. But it doesn't really matter. Everything we've done here, even the definition of an equivalent load, everything is equilibrium. So specifically, if we're going to look at particles, we're looking at something where you only have concurrent forces. We don't have any moments involved. So in two dimensions, we only have the sum of the forces in x equals 0 and the sum of the forces in y equals 0. In three dimensions, we get those two plus one more. But the point is, we don't have any moments, and these are the only equations we get. So this is essentially, find your free body diagram, draw it, write the sum of the forces. Trusses by the method of joints is exactly that. It's just instead of looking at one point in your object, we're looking at a joint in a truss. But it isn't anything more complicated than saying this is a special case of a particle. So because we're dealing with only two force members, every joint only has concurrent forces, which means we're dealing with particles. So remember, you do need to memorize this. this. A two-force member is something that is pinned at two spots, has forces only at the pins, and doesn't have any moments anyway. So that's a two-force member. Um, another thing to remember is that you can look at a zero-force member. Since we only deal with the sum of the forces in X and the sum of the forces equals Y, if you have a situation where you have two members and they're not collinear, then they're both zero, because the sum of the forces equals zero, and the sum of the forces equals zero, and then you get them both equal to zero. If you have a joint with three members, two of them are collinear, then the third has to be zero. This is where you have something that comes into a joint at a T. This one has to be zero. But trusses by the method of joints, anything that looks like this, you're going to look at that spot in the universe. All the forces acting at that spot are concurrent. That's a particle. This is a particle. This is a particle. This, every joint is a particle. So what you can take this apart as a system and say, everything I have here is particle equilibrium. Same thing with a space truss. That's just a three-dimensional version of the thing. When we're talking about rigid bodies, somewhere along the way we have a non-concurrent force. Somewhere along the way we have a moment. Now we have to actually say, to balance this thing, I have to balance both the sum of the forces and the sum of the moments because it doesn't do me any good for this object to not move right or left if it is turning around. To be in equilibrium, it can't be doing either of those things. Friction is the special case of rigid body equilibrium. The tipping condition, here's my free body diagram for a, a basic crate. If you have this function of x, and x has gotten all the way to be greater than r, then you've got a situation where the normal force has to act off the body to counteract P. That means it's not in equilibrium. So that's your tipping condition. Your slipping condition is when this has to exceed your maximum value. Again, those are nothing other than factoids that go with your equations of equilibrium. Trusses by the method of, trusses by the method of sections is another special case of a rigid body equilibrium. In general, what you're going to do is take some massive truss, cut it in half, and say I'm going to consider only the free body diagram of this side. It's useful when the cut you make only goes through three members, because then you can solve for the sum of the forces in X, and the sum of the forces in Y, and the sum of the moments. Your resulting piece is going to be a rigid body. Hint, start where you can actually solve for something. Frames and machines are another special case of equilibrium. The point is, if you cut something and you consider both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, whatever happens in the middle here has to have equal and opposite loads. Uh, hint, you can consider the free body diagram of 
any subset of the parts list. So if you think about your object as something that you've got a set of instruction, a structure manual for, and you were thinking about page two where they list all of your parts, any subset of that is a reasonable free body diagram. Again, it's useful to start where you can solve for something. Again, it's useful to draw a free body diagram that includes an applied load or the load you're actually looking for. Either one of those is a good way to start. Now, as a hint, now as a, a side, I guess, moments cannot be moved off the object that they act on. A moment is a free vector, but it only it's only free insofar as you leave it on the object you're considering. So don't move it from one part of the object to another part of the object. And in terms of ropes, you want to include their effects or their, their actual physicality, but preferably not both. Internal forces are another example of a rigid body equilibrium. Instead of considering two objects, we're going to consider two sides, the left side and the right side. We do have a set of, of sign conventions down here. Positive moment looks like a smile. Positive shear is a like, nice stair step. And a positive tension is a stretch. That gives you these and these, left hand and right hand side. And you just have to memorize what those are so that we're actually all talking to each other. Shear and bending moment diagrams just say I want to graph whatever those are all the way through. We do have a couple of nice um, understandings about how that all works. The change in V is the area under the W curve. The change in M is the area under the V curve. That gives us both the notion of being able to integrate and being able to look at the graphs and draw these shear and bending moment diagrams by graphical construction. In either case, it's all governed by the equations of equilibrium and these couple equations. So when you actually look at this, you get these piecewise functions and you can graph them as you go through. But it, the point is, it's just equilibrium. If you're going to cut this beam in three different places and draw three different free body diagrams, fine. If you're going to actually draw this by graphical construction, fine. But it's all equilibrium. And last but not least, I want to sort of say one word about equivalent loads. This is a definition. It's useful as we're going through here to actually say this is what it means to be equivalent. These two things are the same when. These two things are the same when. Two systems of loads are the same when they have the same force, sum of the forces, and the same sum of the moments as taken at same, the same point. So that's a definition, and it's useful to understand, especially when you're dealing with a, a graph like this, and you need to take this force here, this 400-pound force, and move it to actually acting at the beam itself. That's an equivalent system. It's an example of what that means. All of these things, and frankly, almost everything we did in this whole semester is simply equilibrium.